Today, I'm going to show you how to unbrick a Wise Cam Pan V1. Stay tuned. What's up, guys? It's Josh from the JBL Tech Blog. Good to see you. Today, we're going to do a unbrick on this Wise Cam Pan V1, and you're going to need a couple of tools to do it. Well, you're going to need one tool. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver to disassemble it, and you're going to need something, possibly that same Phillips screwdriver, to do a little pin short. You're also going to need a USB A to A cable, which is like this. You probably have one of these laying around, and this is definitely a requirement for this process. So before we get started, you need to get the cloner software installed on your PC. It works on Linux and Windows, and I have a video on how to install it for Windows over here. If you're a Linux user, I'm going to trust that you know how to do that. The link for the software will be down here in the video description. Let's jump over to the bench, and we'll start this process. All right, I'm gonna use my $1.50 set of precision screwdrivers that I got at Dollar General. We're gonna get our Phillips and we're going to pop the case of this part. So there's two screws. This one here is hidden behind this label. So if you just see labeled, you don't see a screw hole, just poke it with a screwdriver and you'll get to the screw. This one up here allows you to move this whole back plate it's out. So yeah, comes right out. Now, all this is fortunately connected. So once you've got that screw out, you can go ahead and pop the bottom part out too. That's going to get you access to the guts of the camera. Now here you have the processor and such. We're going to go over to the back. This is where the flash chip is. Now notice the orientation of the flash chip. Right here is the indicator for pin one, and the pins go in counterclockwise direction. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the pins that we're interested in is five and six. Now let's jump over to Linux and get cloner set up. All right, here we are. We are in Ubuntu Linux, and I've got the cloner software downloaded already. This does require privileges to be able to read and write your USB ports. So we're going to go ahead and run it with sudo. Go ahead and start that up. You're also going to need to download the current firmware for this camera. So we're going to jump over to our web browser. We're going to go to ingino.com. And we're going to scroll, 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 scroll down to the wise cam pan v1 and here we go we got one image verifying our download that's all good it's done downloading go back to cloner In cloner go over to your config page now for this camera we have a t20 processor make sure your platform is t it's set to t20 and your board is set to the t20 sfc nor ddr2 full dot config and come over here to policy and here you can actually select using this button the firmware image that we just downloaded so go ahead and click on that go into downloads and we've got wise cp1.bin that's good to go go ahead and save it confirm that you want to save it and then over here we're going to hit start now let's jump back over to the overhead all right, here we go. So we've got our USB A to A cable. We're going to go ahead and plug it into the camera first because it's way easier to plug it into our PC on the other end when we're ready. So we got that plugged in. We've got cloner running, as you just saw. I'm just going to get this over near the port. Now, what we want to do, I showed you pin 5 and 6 a minute ago. We want to take our screwdriver and we want to push it not hard we want to press it in between pins five and pin six what we're doing is when the camera boots up we are preventing the processor from being able to read from the flash and that's going to cause it to go into recovery mode which will hit us on cloner so the way that you do it is you get this short setup you plug in the cable you wait about a second and a half and then you remove the screwdriver that's doing the short so we're gonna do that right now. So go ahead and follow along. I've got the USB cord and here we go. We are plugged one and a half seconds in release. 
and then we wait and we should see cloner pick up in about 10 seconds here if it doesn't then we can just try again but i got it on the first try cloner is now moving currently oh, i don't think i can show you this so easy here we go the blue bar is moving it's erasing the flash it's going to do that for a few seconds and it's going to move on to programming the flash it does not take very long to do this so just be patient for a few seconds and it'll continue on to the next step if cloner didn't start doing something go ahead and back the video up and we're going to do that again first time i did it, it took me a dozen tries or so but then after that i pretty much get it on the first try every time now so we're still at the erasing step just waiting for it to finish there now it is at the programming step so this is a 16 megabyte flash. It takes a little bit longer, but not all that long. I want to say the entire process will only take about two and a half minutes or so. We're halfway done programming. Now, once we're done, we're going to have a brand new, fresh Thingino camera. We just finished. So as soon as it gets done, I'm just going to pull the cord, pull it out of here. And we're going to power this up. We're just going to make sure that it comes up on our Wi-Fi and that everything looks good before we reassemble it. So I'm going to grab a micro USB. Now we didn't unplug any of the internals here, so everything just still works as you would expect. You can find the power port, which is here. We're just going to plug in right there. This does not take too long to boot up. I'm going to go ahead and get my phone out in anticipation of this thing coming up. And what we're going to look for, oops, there's the motor test. What we're going to look for is the, the Geno Wi Fi network that you use to configure the device. So there it is. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. It's going to bring us to our config portal. If it doesn't bring you to your config portal, you might need to just open your browser, go to 172.16.0.1, and then you'll be right where I'm at. So now I'm gonna punch in my root password that I want. I'm gonna punch in my Wi-Fi credentials. I'm gonna hit save. Looks good, gonna hit proceed. We're gonna let that go for a second camera will now reboot with those settings i just want to make sure i've got a working video image before i piece it all back together but you can be pretty confident once you've gone through that wi-fi setup stage that you're going to be good to go i heard the ir cut we should be about to do the motor test again there's the ir cut again there's the motor test All right, now the actual camera lens is over here. So I'm going to open up. Well, actually, next thing we'll do is determine the IP address of the camera, which we can do by tapping the reset button once we're confident that it's up and had enough time to come online. So the light's not blinking anymore. Let's tap the button. All right, so now we know its IP address. Let's go ahead and pull that up in our browser. All right, so here we've got our login page. Put in username as root and the password you just chose. Go ahead and sign in. There's our camera preview. Hi, Mom. Hi, everybody. Hello. All right, we're done. Let's go ahead and piece this guy back together. Let's pull the power cord out. Just as easy to put together as it was to take apart. You take the circuit board. This goes this way. Make sure that you don't accidentally pop out your Wi-Fi antenna there. But this guy just slides in. And you just push it right down. And then this piece, figure out which side the top. The label's on the bottom. Put it flat. Give a little push. Goes right in. And you got two screws, one on the top, one on the bottom.
and it's back together. We'll go ahead and power it back up. Now it's been reassembled, but I am confident that we are good to go. So in the meantime, switch back. All right, camera came right back up as expected. I stuck it in front of my 3D printer so you can watch it go doing the thing. So hopefully that's going to take care of you. And we covered all of the steps. If you do run into any trouble, of course, your best bet is to jump over to our Discord channel and get some help from the team. And of course, we welcome everybody over at our Discord. It's the Hackers Homestead. We take care of the Thingino project there, as well as a bunch of other hardware hacking and software type projects. So definitely come check us out. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, you know, they go right down there. If you like this video, make sure and give me a thumbs up. If you're interested in this sort of content, make sure and give me a subscribe. I don't know where that button is. It's around here somewhere. And we'll see you in the next video. Until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags.